In this episode of Roma Custom Bike, we'll do a CV carburetor rebuild! Hi guys, I'm Custom Chess for Roma Custom Bike and in this episode we're gonna get a little bit technical. But when I found myself having trouble with my CV carburetor, I had to fetch the info in a bunch of different places. So I figured it would be nice to put them all together into this video. So one day my carburetor started doing this. You're seeing the problem back in the shop, but this started happening while I was driving on a Roman freeway and I had to keep the throttle fully open the entire ride home, otherwise the engine would die. A nightmare. But after discussing the possible causes with a bunch of people with a lot more experience than me, I figure it must have something to do with the float and to proceed with the full carb rebuild. I started removing the carburetor from the bike and <laughs> no problems there. I'll skip over this part, because if you can figure out how to take your car out, then you have no business opening that thing. <laughs> Bring it to someone. But anyway, I already prepared all the replacement parts contained in a standard rebuild kit I got from Custom Chrome, so let's get to work. By removing the four top cover screws, we immediately find the vacuum piston and spring. Now we'll remove those along with the jet needle, so you can inspect the membrane. I'm going to replace it, but you might not have to if it's in good shape and intact. To check for holes and rips, just hold it to a light and stretch it a bit. I'm replacing it because it's so old and it got quite loose. I tried taking apart the piston, but I ended up hurting myself. So I tried pulling it and it worked. To install the new one I used a little bit of motor oil to lubricate the edge for an easier insertion in the piston. <laughs> Wow, that did not come out right, did it? With a very dull abrasive sponge, I scraped the edges of the guillotine tracks to smooth the edges and make sure it could slide freely. In just about 10 minutes, the top side of the carburetor is serviced. After cleaning everything else, including the needle jet, it's time to reassemble. The membrane has to sit snugly into the groove on the body of the carburetor. My old one was so stretched that it didn't fit anymore, and so that's why I changed it. To wrap up this side, just screw back the cover and don't forget the throttle cable bracket, <laughs> just like I did. <laughs> Testing the guillotine shows no sign of impediment in the movement and it feels very smooth to the touch. Since we're halfway through the job, let me take a moment to remind you to subscribe to the channel <laughs> to receive updates on new videos and support Roma Custom Bike. You can also visit our site romacustombike.com to find bonus content and see some of the bike accessories we're starting to produce. But let's get back to our carburetor now. We start by removing the ball, making sure not to lose any of the pieces. Since I'm at it, I'm taking everything apart to give it a thorough cleaning. get to 
to the diaphragm. It works pretty much like the guillotine assembly, with the spring and a membrane. The difference is that the diaphragm drives a spray of fuel that shoots right into the engine every time you twist the throttle. The o-ring on the cover looks square, so it gets replaced, as well as the diaphragm, although it still looks pretty good. I can now put the cover back, making sure everything is in the right place. In the float ball, I start by replacing the main gasket and the o-ring on the priming jet. And now let's tackle what I think is the culprit for all my trouble, the float. The pin that connects the float to the carb is removed with a couple of careful hits. Removing the float gives me access to the fuel valve. I think it wasn't closing while causing the flooding. I remove the valve and clean all the jets. Now I can install the float back, the pin that secures it to the carburetor, and I'm ready to do the adjustment. <laughs> a bit of a tricky process. To check the adjustment I have to measure the distance between the edge of the float and the edge of the bow. But to get a correct measurement the carb has to be tilted about 15-20 degrees. It took me a little bit of head scratching to figure out how to do it reliably with the tools at my disposal. So I figured to cut the right geometry out of a log of wood and use it as a base for the carve. Now that I'm sure that the carb is at 15 degrees, I can take the measurement. Ah, 11 millimeters! Exactly! That's the right measurement, yeah! <laughs> if the measurement had been off, I would have had to bend a little bit the middle fuel valve bracket until the measurement is within range. Very well, the rebuild is complete, now we can reassemble the carburetor and see what type of damage I've done. <laughs> I also replace the gasket on the manifold and reconnect the carb to the bike, starting with the throttle control and reconnecting the fuel line. And this is yet another moment of truth or truthiness. Well, I feel it in my gut, so truthiness. In the history of Roma Custom Bike, will it start? <laughs> <laughs> now I have a very special assistant helping me with the assembly of the air filter box. And you know, you've gotta train them young. <laughs> it took me about an hour to do and it was a very nice project. So remember to subscribe, leave a comment, press the like button and share, share, share. We need your support to grow the channel so that we can keep doing what we do. <laughs> so that's it for today you guys, I'm Custom Chess and I'll see you in the next episode of Roma Custom Bike.